Hi, pre-algebra. You're really smart. Um, I'm excited. You're going to accomplish a lot of things. I really, really do believe that. Um, this is for a brief review of 7.1 to 7.3, just in case you need it. You may or may not. Uh, I don't know if you can fast forward for things you might need or if you just have to listen to it all, but I'm going to try and make it brief. Okay? So in 7.1, we talked about percents and fractions. Okay? Percents and fractions. So 51% changing to that, that to a fraction is real easy because you just put 51 over 100. Percent means hundreds. Okay, 25%, you should know that one, but 25 over 100 uh, simplifies to one fourth, but you should know that one by heart. 11 20ths, hopefully you know that 20 times five is 100, so that's gonna be 55%. 4 25ths, well, 25 times four is 100, so this is 16%. Okay, if there were 10 finalists in an art competition and you were one of them, what's the probability that you'll win? Well, the probability is one out of 10, which is 10%, okay? So we, we, you know some of those fractions, there are those fractions you should know, your fifths, your tenths, your fourths, uh, you might know a few more. Uh, if you're finding a percent of a number, uh, we don't usually calculate with percents. We calculate with fractions or decimals, okay? So 25% is one-fourth, and you use all the things you know about fractions. One-fourth times, well, 36 becomes 36 over 1, and you can simplify that problem, okay? You might even be able to do it in your head. One-fourth of 36 is 9, okay? Use the things you know about fractions. 70% is 7 tenths times 80 over 1. Well, I can simplify that to 7 times 8 equals 56. Okay? So that's kind of a good start. Now, one of the probably the most important things is 7.2. We talked about percents and proportions. Proportions are important because you use them all over the place in algebra, okay? Knowing how to solve a proportion is so important, but if you have a percent problem, you can set it up as a proportion. A is P percent of B translates to A over B equals P over 100 because the percent is out of 100, right? Okay, so the is number goes on top. The of number goes on the bottom, percent number over 100. Okay, so if I have what percent of 48 is 12, well, this is my is number, this is my of number, I'm trying to find P. So I've got 12 over 48 equals P over 100. Now remember, we're using what we know about fractions, okay? This isn't in lowest terms. This is equal to 1 fourth. And I know that 1 fourth is 25%. So P is gonna be 25%. Does that make sense? I hope so. Is number over of number equals P over 100. So if I have what number is 15% of 80, well, I've got my percent number and I've got my of number. So that translates into um, A, over 80 equals 15 over 100, okay? Now, 15 over 100, I can simplify. I can divide those both by five, and that's gonna give me 3 20ths, and then I can use my equal fractions. 20 times four is 80, so three times four is gonna give me A, and A will equal 12. I could use my rule of three, 80 times three divided by 20, I'm gonna get the same thing, 
okay? So you can use your cross, you could use cross products. Uh, use your simpler numbers though. 20 times A equals 240, divide by 20, you get 12, okay? So that kind of takes us, okay, we got one more. What if I had 20 is 30% of what number? Well, I've got my is number, I've got my percent number, I don't have my out of number. So that means I've got 20 over B equals 30 over 100, okay? Those zeros cancel out. This is one where I would probably use my rule of three Cross, multiply the two you can, divide by the third one, okay? That gives me um, 200 over three, and that's gonna give me 66 and two thirds, okay? 7.3 was all about percents and decimals. Okay, and remember, you remember that percent means hundredths, so hey, this says 62 hundredths, so it's going to equal 62%. And the thing you've got to remember is this, is this is where we're just moving that decimal, so you just got to know which way to move it. And it makes sense, 62 hundredths, 62%, so I move it to that way, okay? So whenever I'm changing a decimal to a percent, I move it to the right twice, okay? So one, I've got to add that decimal so I can move it twice. Here, I've got three, so I'm going to move it twice, okay? So one is 100%, which makes total sense. 100 hundredths is equal to one. And this is going to be 46.1 percent. All right. Obviously, if going from a percent or from a decimal to a percent, I move it to the right. When I go from a percent to a decimal, I'm going to move it to the left. Okay. I've got to move it to the left. That means I've got to add a couple of zeros in here. It starts at the back, moves to the left. Okay. Do you kind of see how that goes? So this is going to be 0.75. This is going to be 0 0.004, and this is going to be 1.68, okay? Well, what do they do if they give you a fraction? Well, what do we do with fractions? We turn them to decimals, don't we? Okay? So if we they give you a fraction and they say, well, write it as a percent, well, some of them you've got to do a little bit of work. This is 8 goes into 3. 0 0.000, I know because I know what three, I know what three eighths is, just, but you might not know, okay? So eight goes into 33 times, which gives me six left over, bring down a zero, seven times, 56, gives me a four left over, and eight goes into 45 times. So 3.375, is my decimal, I've got to move it over two places to make it a percent. It's 37.5%. Some people like to use fractions. That's the same as 37.5%. Both are valid, okay? So what if they give you one like two thirds, okay? Well, two thirds is three goes into two, Okay, and I know because it's a three, it's going to be a repetent. Okay, hopefully you know that too. You might even know what this is. Okay, three goes into 26 times, 18, subtract. Ooh, that's just what I started with. I'm going to get a whole bunch of sixes. So how do I change that to a percent? Well, I need at least three of them because I've got to move it twice. So that's going to be 66.6 .6 repetend percent, but even better is to say 66 
and two thirds percent. Because most calculators don't have a repetend key, but they've got a fraction key. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so what do I do with these problems? Well, this one I'm gonna tell you, some people would look at that and say, ah, oh, 20, I can change it to a fraction. I know what fraction that is. And that's right, but you could also change it to a decimal and do 0.2 times 85. Now, the only reason I, I say that is because it's easy to multiply by two in your head. I mean, two times five is 10, carry one, two times eight is 16, that's 17. You know you're gonna have one decimal point, uh, so that's gonna give you 17. If I did one fifth times 85, guess what? Five goes into 85 17 times. Okay, now if I had 3.8% of 45, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm changing that to a decimal because I don't know what fraction that is. And that kind of looks scary to me. So I move it twice this way. That means I've got to put a zero in front 45 times 0 0.038, multiply by eight, eight times five is 40, carry the four, eight times four, 32, 36, three times five is 15, carry the one, three times four is 12, 13. I do not need to put a row of zeros, they do not help me at all. Three, three, six, seven, one, I need three decimal places. So my answer is 1.71. You do not have to put that last zero, okay? So this is a, a good review. Hope it helps you. Might help you to, to watch it again. You can watch it as many times as you want, as many times as you need. Hope it helps you with your homework. Hope it helps you review for the quiz. Look forward to seeing you in Teams. Bye.